This young lady's going to owe me something after this one, because how can you match losing a child, cancer? I can't do that, but I'll do my best, and we'll get through it. I'm already 15 seconds into my speech, so it's, I'm thrilled to be here, absolutely thrilled, and I'm going to tell a little bit about Novell and some stories along the way, but first I want to talk about serendipity, how serendipity changed my life. And two things I want you to walk away with today about serendipity. Number one, it only happens through connection with people. And the second thing is it only happens if you work hard at it. You'll find that the, the harder you work, the luckier and more serendipitous your life will be. So serendipity is searching for one thing and finding something of greater value. So I'm going to tell you a couple of stories today to illustrate those points. So the year was 1985, September 15, 1985, my mother's birthday. What could be a better day than that? I got a call from my mother. It was shipped to shore. She was on her 42nd wedding anniversary cruise with my dad. Unfortunately, that night he died of a heart attack. And she called to tell me the news. It was shocking, leaving seven small children, no income. It disrupted our lives completely. But going to what Kareen said, you can take life when it throws lemons at you and make lemonade. And so what I did is I got off my rear end. I flew to Utah to meet with my four sisters that were up here at the time to settle some things associated with my father's estate. I arrived, and I was driving from the Salt Lake Airport down to Provo. My sister lived in Orem, and I came down on uh, 8th North in Orem. And off the side, I saw this big sign. It said, N-O-V-E-L-L, Novell. And I thought, well, that's a company that's based in Silicon Valley. I know a computer engineer that had told me that LANs were the next great thing, local area networking. And so I was very excited about Novell, and I thought, Gosh, I wonder what the company's doing here in Utah. So I get a little bit further down I-15, and a voice speaks to me, get off the freeway. And I'm like, no, come on, just keep driving. I got to go see my sister. Get off the freeway. So Orem Center Street, I get off, do a U-turn, go back up to 8th North and Orem, and I walk into Novell's office. I walk up to the receptionist thrust my hand out and said, I'm David Bradford, and I'm here to meet with the president of the company. <laughs> and Carol Carlson, still a dear friend to this day, said, well, what are you here uh, to see Mr. Norda about? And I said, well, I'm a lawyer experienced in the computer industry, and I'd love to talk to Mr. Norda. So she goes back, she finds Ray. While I'm waiting in that lobby... I'm sitting around, if you'll remember, it's that circular lobby. The Boy Scouts of America now have their district office in that building. And as I looked around, I saw a couple of awards that were given to Novell. And then I saw a big sign that said Job Board. And I walked over to the Job Board and said, Shipping and Receiving Clerk, Sales Rep, Marketing Specialist, Corporate Legal Counsel. It had David Bradford's name written all over it. So when Mr. Norda came out, I was able to tell him I was there to meet with him regarding that job. Two weeks later, we moved to Provo, Utah, and my life changed forever. Serendipity, you might say. But you know what? I got off my rear end. I did something, and I took a dismal situation and turned it into a positive. How many people in this room have heard of Bill Gates? By show of hands. Okay, thank you. Now, how many people in this room have heard of Gary Kildall? Now, this is the Women's Tech Council, so you should know something about the history of your industry. Gary Kildall is the father of the PC operating system. Bill Gates never invented anything. Gary Kildall invented CPM, Control Program Monitor, in 1977 at the Naval Research Laboratories in Monterey, California. Built a wonderful company called Digital Research. But he's a footnote in the annals of the computer industry today. Why? 
because of relationships. Let me illustrate. Bill Gates' mother sat on a school board in Seattle, Washington. She met somebody there who worked for IBM, and when IBM needed their first PC operating system to put into their new business personal computer, she said, have you talked to my son Bill, right? And so she introduced her son Bill to IBM. He then went on to sign the largest contract in the history of the computer industry, or I should say the most important contract in the history of the computer industry. It made Gates the, most rich ma the richest man on planet Earth. Right? Serendipity? Yes, a little bit, but relationships. It's all about people. And then Bill got off his rear end, went and met with IBM, and things happen. When you network, serendipity is most likely to happen. The six up principles I'm going to talk about today. I love being up. I listen to uh, Kareen. She reminds me so much of my mother. I was at my mother's house last night, 90 years old. She said, David, today's the greatest day of my life. She just loves life, and she's enthusiastic about it. Well, these principles she taught me from early childhood, and I call them my six up principles, and this is how you network to get to the top. You start up. That's your first up. You start up by giving. Look around this room. Who in this room needs your hand up? How can you accelerate their career trajectory? Think about them before you come into this room thinking, oh, I need the next job. I need this, that, and ever. No, think about the other person first. You give with no thought of getting. I helped a guy in 2003 and introduced him to some VC firms here in Utah. Five years later, he called me up. I'd completely forgotten about him. He says, Dave, I found a company called Fusion IO. Can I introduce you? Boom. Fusion I took, uh, took off. We took it public on the New York Stock Exchange. Miraculous things happen. The second thing that happens in life is you got to show up. 90% of success in life is simply showing up. You've shown up here today. Marvelous. I showed up at an event in Sun Valley, Idaho in July of 2008. I met Steve Wozniak. I have a little computer back there that Steve Wozniak has now signed. Because Steve Wozniak came to work for me at Fusion IO when I was CEO as my chief scientist. It was his first technology job since Apple. He invented the Apple computer that I signed. Crazy. I showed up. I then followed up with Steve. That very night, I drove six hours from Sun Valley, Idaho to Provo, Utah, penned an email to Steve and asked him to join my advisory board. He did. It changed the trajectory of Fusion IO in the history of the company. you got to follow up. By the way, follow up is a lost art. I have 17 seconds left. Follow up within 24 hours of meeting someone here today, and it could change your life. The next point I want to make about up is to stand up in life. You can do everything else to connect with people and build those relationships, but unless you're a credible stand-up person, people aren't going to want to do business with you. Next point, link up. I'm going to run through these last two just very quickly because my time has expired. But link up by being personal and being curious. People will go, of course David Bradford's been a successful networker. Look how gregarious he is. Look how outgoing he is. No, everybody in this room can be a great networker if you have one characteristic, and it's to be curious. Ask questions. Find areas of commonality. And when you find areas of commonality, Trust forms, relationships build, and great things happen. Link up by asking questions and being curious. My last point is to scale up that network. The word network is not net eat. It's not net goof off. It's network. It takes time. It takes commitment. You've shown that today by networking here today. You've done that extra step that most people won't do. You all know the 10,000-hour principle. Uh, described by Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Outliers, where he says that of the people that the uh, 800 musicians that they studied, five or so became world class. How? They each spent 10,000 hours practicing the piano between the ages of five and 20. It wasn't their economic background. It wasn't where they grew up. It wasn't their parentage. It wasn't their DNA. It was hard work. Networking takes hard work. I hope you'll follow these six principles. Thank you very much.